Hello friends, this video is about interview questions for FES test analysis with answers. This is the third video of mine in this series. Today I am going to talk to you about one of the questions uh, that was asked in an interview and answers to those to that questions. So this interview was uh, sorry this interview question was about model analysis and I am going to give you answers about that. If you like this video and want to view similar content do like and subscribe to my youtube channel in this video i'll be talking to you about the assumptions in a model analysis simulation so this was an interview question asked to me long ago when i was interviewing for a company so the assumptions that go into the model analysis are important if these assumptions are not valid the analysis may go wrong so i was asked in the interview what are the assumptions we make uh, while performing a model analysis simulation so in this video i'll be giving you answers to that question the first assumption that we make is that uh, the cad model represents the actual geometry so the cad model will have a perfect thickness a perfect fillet radius and all those things but while manufacturing is it possible i don't think so so what happens so the thickness will not be constant, the, the thickness may not be exactly equal to what we intended to be, the fillet radius may not be exactly what we intended to be and things like that. So however uh, it is important that uh, the CAD model represents the actual geometry to a high degree of accuracy, then only our model analysis will be accurate. The next assumption that we make is that the boundary conditions we have assigned to the model are exact. So we will have some, more, some model in the FEA and, and in that model we, are, we assume that we are having the perfect boundary conditions. Uh, this is not usually perfectly true but it can be true to a good degree of accuracy. The more accurate this assumption is the better our results will be. So, uh, so other assumptions are actually a little bit more easier. Uh, a little bit easier to uh, satisfy but this assumption is not easier to satisfy so so usually this is the most difficult part of any uh, structural analysis in uh, the model analysis simulations usually we assume that there is no damping damping can be accounted for in model analysis simulation also but at a big cost which is not justified considering the amount of difference it will make to the final result. So usually in the industry when we perform model analysis uh, for most underdamped systems like most of the systems that we see in the industry, we generally assume there is no damping uh, at least in the model analysis. We assume that the temperature of the body does not change during the course of deformation. So now this assumption is important because uh, if the temperature changes during the course of deformation, the Young's modulus will change and with the Young's modulus changing, the, the stiffness will also change. So uh, one important assumption that we make is that the temperature does not change during the course of deformation. So actually while the deformation is taking place, a small amount of change in temperature can take place and that will affect the stiffness. But we neglect that and this is valid to a high degree of accuracy usually. Most of the model analysis that we perform in the industry is linear. So even if there is a non-linear system, we linearize the system and uh, perform the model analysis. This means that during the course of deformation, there is no change in contact status. Uh, this is not exactly valid in the real life, uh, but as long as it is valid to a high degree of accuracy, our model analysis will be uh, accurate. So what we usually do is that uh, while simulating, we assume the, most of the all of the contacts as uh, bonded contacts or no separation slipping contacts. The next assumption that we make uh, is that the stress strain curve is a straight line. So this is usually valid uh, as long as we are within the limits of the linearity, this is okay. The next assumption that we make is that the strain displacement plot is a straight line. So what we are basically saying here is that the strain is proportional to displacement. This is true as long as 
the geometric nonlinear effects are negligible. We assume that the material is homogeneous. Now, if you take a microscopic view of the material, uh, it is not at all uh, homogeneous. But uh, for continuum hypothesis, this assumption is necessary. And it has been seen that this assumption holds to a high degree of accuracy for model analysis. The next assumption that we make is that the material is elastic. So this assumption is not exactly valid at micro level, uh, but provided the conditions for linearity at a macro level have been satisfied, this assumption can hold true to a high degree of accuracy. The next assumption that we make is that the material of which the structure is made is rate independent. So we assume that uh, the stress strain curve of the material is independent of the rate at which the material deforms. So the rate at which the strain is taking place, uh, so how fast the strain is varying with respect to time. Uh, we assume that the material, is, material uh, uh, stress strain curve is independent of that. Next, we assume that the material does not crack anywhere during the course of deformation. Uh, this may not always be true, uh, but we assume it to be true. So micro level cracks will not change the stiffness much, but if there is a macro, uh, macroscopic crack that, that emerges on the structure during the course of deformation, it can change the stiffness of the structure and render the model analysis uh, inaccurate. The last assumption that I'm going to talk to you about is that we assume that the material properties we assigned are perfect. So if you test the material properties uh, from specimen to specimen, they will vary. And from structure to structure also, they will vary. Uh, but we assume that uh, the structure has exactly the same properties uh, that, we have, uh, that we have assigned. So this will introduce some amount of error. Uh, however, the error is likely to be small. Those of you who like this video and want to view similar content, do like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It is your continued encouragement uh, that makes that encourages me to make such videos which will be useful for people who are about to appear for interviews. Thank you.